but I would say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. As a children to learn at your feet, Holy Spirit, help us. Give us a deeper revelation knowledge of your word. A deeper, a deeper revelation knowledge. Holy Spirit, open our eyes of understanding. Open our eyes of understanding. Open our eyes of understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I'm sure many of us was extremely blessed, like I was yesterday. Um, for my sister's ministration yesterday, that was very powerful. The, the prayer session was very, very heavy. You know, um, I want us to, I'm going to continue from where I stopped, then we're going to go into, I hope everyone can hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Zina. All right. So, um, it's the same topic, which is um, part two of where I started on um, on Monday, which was, who am I in Christ? Who am I in Christ? You know, um, and one of the major reasons um, before we go into it, I just had this sense of um, nudge in my spirit for us to pray for the saturation of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Can we take one minute and ask that Holy Spirit be enthroned in my heart right now? Saturate my environment. Let your presence saturate my environment. Holy Spirit be enthroned. Holy Spirit be enthroned. Holy Spirit be enthroned. We have come as your children. We have come with every burden in our heart. We have come to seek for strength. We have come to seek for help. Holy Spirit be enthroned. Saturate this environment with your presence. Your presence. Your presence. Be enthroned, Holy Spirit. Be enthroned. Over our lives be enthroned. Over our hearts be enthroned. We don't have the eyes to see. We don't have the ears to hear. We have no ideas what is written in this book until you show us. Open our eyes to see what the natural eyes cannot see. Open our ears, oh God. Holy Spirit be enthroned. Holy Spirit be enthroned. Reveal yourself to us like never before. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Reveal the love of Christ. Open our eyes to see the true identity of who we truly are. Open our eyes, Jesus. Open our eyes, Jesus. Open our eyes, Jesus. Father, let your name alone be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, I welcome everyone to tonight's meeting. Um, I pray the Lord, you know, we encounter each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to quickly open our Bible to the book of 2 Corinthians 5.17. I'm going to quickly put some scriptures out there. You know, um, if you want to volunteer to read for us, please kindly do so. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Um, John 15, verse 15. Romans 8, 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The Lord is making us understand here that one of our 
responsibility. But one of the things we need to know as children of God is for us to see our true identity in Christ, we must make a deliberate decision through the help of the Holy Spirit to stay, to be in Christ. We must make that decision that, Lord, help me to stay, help me to be. You know, he said, therefore, if any man, therefore, if, conditional statement, if any man, meaning this person must make an intentional decision. They, just like Joshua told the children of Israelite, he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He made a choice. And one of the things, you know, um, God never took for man is the pile of choice. No matter how, you know, I said something on Monday that I said the Holy Spirit shared with me. He said, my son, it is everything will be measured to you based on your level of hunger. God never enforce anything on no man. No matter how, 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 how talented or gifted that person is, he will never enforce anything, no. If all you desire is to just be um, to be relevant within a family cycle or your cycle of your family, God will be okay. It will only take the sovereign, the sovereign power of God for God to visit that person and say, my son, my daughter, no, you are limiting yourself. You know, so the Lord is telling us here from 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in if this person can make a decision to stay in, if they can just stay in, they, I'm telling you, the new nature, their true identity has no choice but to emerge. It has no choice. It must emerge. It's a must. I'm telling you the truth. I, that you are looking at, am a witness. I'm a living example of that. December 28th, I smoked. That was the very day I gave my life to Christ. I smoked. I drank. Came back, and I made and I said I I I, I said a prayer of about two three minutes. At maximum was five minutes. The Lord visited me, speaking into my conscience, even though I was drunk. And the Lord said, "Let me help you." And I broke down in tears, and I said a very short prayer. Lord, help me. And the next day, I went to my pastor and I said, sir, can you give me a prayer book? He gave me the prayer book and I prayed for almost two hours that very day. And one thing that I can tell you is as I stay in the presence, I realized that that short minute or five minutes of prayer, you know, one thing I learned from my personal encounter is when the mercy of God, when the time has really come for the mercy of God to liberate a person, no man can stop it. And when it comes, it can come in the most unusual way. I'm telling you, because even the person who hosted the party that night, he picked me up on the 27th for the party. His, his, his current girlfriend that time came from California. He organized the party. And by the next day, when he came to pick me up again, he dropped me off after the party. By the next day, and I told him I gave my life to Christ. He was just laughing. He said, see, I think you have an hangover. He couldn't believe it because he felt like, come on, I bought Bacardi for you. You drank Becks, Hennekin, everything. I bought everything. I saw you. How can you tell me within six hours and you give your life to Christ? Guess what? Only God could have done that. No man can do that in the flesh. And one thing I realized is I lost interest in TV. I lost interest in many things. I will sit on YouTube 2008 and I will go on YouTube and I will keep watching um, the story of Jesus Christ, the story of Apostle Paul, and I just kept, and I will stay in the presence of God, believe me, 
masturbation, you know, or fornication, you know, uh, 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 drinking. This thing died. It died natural death. To the point that when I was working at Walgreens, you know, I began to preach to people. I'll be at the cash register, ringing people up, and people report me to my store manager. And yet my, my store manager will call me aside. He said, this is against company's policy. But I'm not going to write to you because I know what you are doing. I understand it, you know. But what am I trying to tell you is God endowed me with the grace to stay. I start staying in his presence. Everything died off. It died naturally. You see, friends, if truly you want to see your greatest potential, one of the prayers we must pray is, God, help me to stay. Help me. Look at the life of Jesus. Like I said on Monday, even Jesus had to go through this principle. That was why even at the age of 12, he started staying early. He started staying early in God's presence. He started staying early. So it is very, very important that anyone who we emerge who we enter into their true identity, who we enter their ordination, their purpose, they must be willing to stay. He, that, he said, therefore, if any man be in, you must make a choice to stay in Christ. In Christ. As long as that person is in, so many things will be happening. God will begin to tell you some things that even your parents you, the people who give birth to you, they have no idea about it. I was, there was a day, I was in the presence of the Lord. Then I used to live with my brother, who is also my pastor. And this day, Holy Spirit said, he said, do you know that there were many things that happened the day when your mom was pregnant of you? I said, what do you mean? He said, okay, for you to be sure what I'm telling you, I want you to pick up yourself right now and go all the way to Avenel. Go meet your mom and ask her what I told you. No man was there. Just me and the Holy Spirit. Imagine if I was a lazy Christian, if I was just a casual Christian. How do you, you see, brethren, I'm telling the honest truth. Please, and let me say this. I'm begging you. Holy Spirit told me this. Please, I beg you, if you ever see me preach somehow, maybe in a way that comes harsh, I want you to know that I didn't mean it. I will never do, nobody comes to me in weakness because I was once extremely weak. I was once extremely weak. I know what it means to live in a life where there was no hope. So what I'm trying to say is, if you see me preach in a very strict or harsh way, it's not to bring you down. Sometimes, you see, when you're, when you're an evangelist or the Lord has called you into a ministry of revival, sometimes you can't control the oil. When the grace comes upon you, sometimes it can, it can move you in different ways. But please, I want you to know, never be offended in me. Sometimes you will feel that way, that what is this man trying to achieve? No. It's not to hurt, but to bring us to the place of restitution, a place of reconciliation with the Lord. Believe me. So what am I trying to say is just, I want you to just pay attention to my heart. You know, my desire is to make sure that you don't go through the things some of us have been through. And while I was in the presence of the Lord, I went to my mom and my mom said, truly, when I was pregnant of you and your twin sister, they gave me a word of prophecy from um, uh, what do you call it? Or this diabolic, demonic, you know, priest that if they don't dedicate myself and my twin to an idol, most likely when she give birth to us, we are going to die. So she was not telling me that they are to dedicate myself and my twin to three different idols. Three different idols. Brethren, if I did not, if I wasn't spending time with the Lord, 
How do you think I would have discovered that? You see, one of the ways the enemy cheat us and one of the things we don't know about the person of the Holy Spirit, the brethren, I'm telling you this, I'm a very young boy. I'm a very young boy. But let me tell you one of the secrets I have found about God. God doesn't disclose deep things quickly. I'm telling you the truth. Just like normal human beings. How many of us are here? We are 16 people here now. I have some people here who I'm very close with. But guess what? There are many deep things about them they have never told me. And I will never ask. That is it. Imagine if human beings don't disclose their personal deepest life. How do you think God would just know? We have to, you have to gain that trust. You have to allow God to know that, yes, I'm willing to be in you. I'm willing. I just went on a retreat this past weekend and I kept asking the Lord. I was, and on Saturday morning when I was in his presence and the Holy Spirit said, I need more of you. I said, what do you mean? He said, you are not yielding enough. Uh -uh. With everything I'm doing, guess what? That word yield, he didn't elaborate. He only told me a few things. I wrote them down. Guess what? On Monday, while I was meditating and listening to a message, he now, he now came back again and revisited. He revisited what he told me at the retreat. He said, what I meant that you are not yielding enough. I need you to separate yourself more, to become more consecrated more. Brethren, the reason why I'm telling you this is because, you see, this, this journey is, is a journey that God, think about this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Why would God tell Abraham, take your only child? He said, take him and go and kill him on a mountain, I will show you. And guess what? That man went on that journey for three days. How come God never told him where he was going the first day, the second day? It was until the third day he was now revealing it. He needed to test, to be able to vert. He wanted to confirm his faith, to see his loyalty. Brethren, it's a journey. I'm telling you, I was telling someone who was very close to me, you know, on, on Sunday, before she went back to school, I said, my sister, this journey, every time you say, God, I love you, brethren, we test it. We will pay for that word. I'm telling you the truth. Permit me to use that word. We of everyone, you will pay. You, if we test it, that word, I love you, Lord. Or you, or you tell God, God, use me. Ah, you are asking for trouble. You, because did you remember what he told what he told um, John and James, or son of Zebedee? The mother was asking for the throne to sit on the right hand. He said, "It's not of me to say who sit on the throne, but of the Father." But one question he asked the mother: Are they willing to drink of my cup? There's no problem. If, if it is the throne they want, no problem. But are you willing? Because at everything we tell God, there is a cost. There is a cost. A mother, we, let me start from a single person. Lord, give me a husband. Lord, give me a wife. See, while the person is waiting, the Lord is also saying, do you know what you're asking? Do you know that it will cost you? Do you know that once you get to this relationship, it's no longer about you? Now, we have to make considerate, we have to consider ourselves in our decisions. Every decision has to be in consideration. You have to consider your partner. Do you know that everything, with, when you now get married, everything changes. I'm telling you, everything changes. Your life is no longer yours when you are married. Your body is no longer yours when you are married. It's no longer, I'm not interested today. The, the emotions, you can't allow emotion to decide decisions anymore. Things change. A mother asking God, God, give me a child. Ah, God is asking, are you sure? Are you prepared? I will give you, but are you prepared? Everything in this kingdom has a price. 
we come with a responsibility. The same child that the mother is begging for, begging God, that God give me a child. Guess what? In a short time, you will see the same mother telling God, God help me for this child. This, this responsibility is weighing me down. So what am I trying to say? Preparation is very important. Preparation. Knowing. The Bible says, is there a man that wants to build a house without counting the cost? At the beginning of the journey, he will tell you, come as you are. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have eternal life. That is the first phase of a newborn baby. Milk. Before milk, breast milk. After a child, the same child, the same baby that you cannot beat as a baby. A time comes when the baby, when that child grows, when they do something wrong, you don't hesitate to beat them. You don't hesitate to discipline them. That is the way this journey is. Because you know that that discipline is part of what makes them a better citizen. Brethren, what I'm saying in summary, in all this explanation, it will be very challenging for a believer who doesn't count the cost. The same Jesus told us, say, who is he that want to follow me? You will deny your father, your mother, you will deny, you will deny everybody around you. Now, you will not deny yourself. You will look at yourself, the things you like the most. The Lord will tell you, you can't do that, my son. You can't go to that place, my daughter. You can't live like that no more. You can't talk like this no more. Now you not belong to me. You don't belong to yourself anymore because you have been bought with a price. We, bu we bought you with a price. I want us to move for that. The next reading, um, John 15, 15. Anyone is there can go ahead. John 15, 15. I read, it says, henceforth I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what is the Lord doeth. But I have called your friends for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known unto you. Brethren, we are no longer a servant who is a slave, even though our life is still in service to the plan and purposes of the kingdom. But now, one person that was being attributed with that word, a friend, was one man called Abraham. Do you know <laughs> the years, the years of testing? Do you know how long it took Abraham to get that name, my friend, Abraham? To get that name, my friend, this man went through a journey of waiting on God for 25 solid years. And in just you giving your life to Christ, the Lord is saying, my son, my daughter, you are no longer a servant. By the reason of the death and resurrection of my son, Jesus, you have been put, you have been brought to a higher level. Called a friend. So when God calls a friend, how do you have a friend that you only visit? A true friend. I have a Muslim friend. Everything we talk about, he was part of my groomsmen. Every, every, we can be on the phone for one hour. All we talk about every time is success, business, and life and marital life. He doesn't drink. I'm telling you, he called me today to wish me happy birthday. Every time we talk, it's either we are talking about IT, talking about business, talking about family. He's older than me with a year or two. Yet, he will come to me. Taiwo, what do you think about this for advice? Brethren, what I'm trying to tell you is, I'm begging you in the name of God. Because if you have a friend, even though my friend that I'm talking about, he lives in Princeton, 
Sometimes, if we're having hangout for a while, I will drive all the way there to Princeton. You cannot have a friend that you call a friend and you don't communicate. You can you can you can't have a friend that you don't know anything about. Brethren, the Lord is calling because you see, when you get to this level of understanding that you are a friend of God, you take advantage of that friendship by becoming more vulnerable. Vulnerable means you must make you must you must strip every of your weaknesses to him. I was telling someone who is very close to me, I said. Please, tell him everything. I'm telling you, one of the ways the Lord has really helped me in my walk with the Lord, even when I used to smoke, I always tell God everything. Lord, I have masturbated today, help me. Lord, I have smoked with today, help me. Lord, I'm probably going to smoke when I leave this church, help me. I tell him everything, everything. I'm telling you, no matter how terrible a person is, believe me, I will never... Even if the person is a killer, I will never turn them down. I will tell you that what you are doing is wrong, but I will never turn them down. I'm telling you, I, I, my, 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 my preaching might come sometimes very vibrant, but I will never, never turn down a person who is struggling, always going through some challenges with the Lord. No, no. I'm telling you, one name, if I die, if I die one day, one name, just like Apostle Selma will say, one name, or Apostle Osai will say, one name, can you say that you, you, you found in your work with God? Before I got married, 2014, I believe, God gave, that was the first song that we ever received from the Lord. The name I found with God is the God of mercy. That was the first song. It was a moment in my life that my life was, I was asking God for many things. And they gave me a song. I will never forget that song. Mercy, mercy is what I want, O oh Lord. Mercy, mercy is all I ask today. Mercy, mercy. All I want to oh Lord. I was just I was in his presence that day when that song came. I busted into the more I sing that song, the more I, I the more I kept singing and the more I kept breaking down in tears. Mercy, mercy is all because I have I, I know what it means to drown. And please, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, no matter what you are going through. To, Talk to him more. Talk, talk to God more. I'm telling you, there was a level in my life that when I talked to the Holy Spirit, I talked to him like I see him. To the point that when I wake up in the morning, in African culture, especially in the West, in Yoruba, Yoruba culture, when you want to greet, you prostrate. There was a season in my life, I prostrate to greet the Holy Spirit. I'm sharing some of my secret place with you tonight that many of you have never heard from me. I will prostrate in the morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I heard this story from fathers of faith. And the day he was going to visit me, he, visit, he visited me tangibly that his hand touched my shoulder like this. Tangibly like this. Brethren, these things are real. I'm telling you the truth. This thing, you see, just like many of those people will see, oh, and the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. It didn't appear. Some of them, they didn't see physical angel. They came as men until the message was delivered. Then they disappeared. Then they realized, oh my God, it was an angel. Brethren, before an honorable to, he knows what you are going to. His greatest desire is to see us emerge into our true, into our true identity. But we cannot emerge if we don't take advantage by communication. And it's an attack of the enemy. I'm telling you, it's an attack. I've been through it. There is a face you can be in light. When the enemy attack your tongue, it means you know what you are supposed to do. But the enemy will attack you in a way that you won't be able to pray against it. You will know that you are supposed to study. You have an exam. And yet, the enemy will tell you, watch Netflix. You know, you didn't finish that season yet. You didn't do this yet. You didn't do that yet. 
and then you have just few hours to the exam. Now you are trying to, how do you catch up with about five chapters? You know things are not working right. You know some things are affecting your spiritual life. And you know you are supposed to pray. You know what to do. But the enemy, will, you, you will just realize you find it difficult to pray. Why? The enemy is trying to make the person dumb. They, see, they, have, they want to seal the tongue. No. No. Even when you cannot pray, tell him, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. Help me. Don't let me go down. Help me. Give me your strength. Send me your strength from Zion. I'm begging you. I'm telling you, take advantage of the help of God. There is more inside of you that you have never imagined. That you can never imagine. I'm telling you, there is more. There is more. You are a friend. Look at what the Bible says. It said, if I can give you my only son, if he can die when you don't even, when you were living in sin, how much more? How much more? Brethren, take advantage of the blood that was shed on the cross. Don't allow the enemy to keep you in a, in a life of iniquity. I've been through it. I'm telling you, you are in a relationship and you already have been intimacy with your partner and you are not married yet. Go to God. Get the young man. Brother, please let's take a break. Let's go, let's go, let's go help the let's and ask the help of God. Take a break. Tell God, God help me. Don't let me go down like this. Cry to God. I've I've said this to some of us. You have a job, you are not paying mortgage. The Lord has blessed you. Please embrace a life of retreat. Embrace a life of retreat. Go on a retreat. I'm begging you. You see, one of the things that makes me happy about me celebrating my 40th birthday today, in as much that I have other desires of other things I'm trusting God to do for me. But let me be honest with you. One of the things I thank God for is God helped me to discover my purpose on time, but not really on time. I wasted almost 10 years in drug addiction and fornication. Let me share a testimony, a story of my life that I've never shared on this platform. Some might probably have heard it from me. And that is why I wanted to take your journey very serious. In 2012, I was still at, I was a student at Excess County College. That period of my life, I was asking God to show me what he has called me to do. If I needed to go into ministry full time, I was so zealous. I used to pray for four hours. I used to pray a lot. I used to pray a lot for long hours. And in that vision, I had a vision. In that vision, I saw I was, I was in a van, a van like a 14-seater van, like a caravan. And a friend of mine that we went to a university together in Nigeria was the one driving the van. I was sitting at the passenger side in front. All of a sudden, he told me, he said, tell the passenger that we're going to have a stopover. I told him, the moment we got to the front of the house, he packed and he told me, let's go upstairs. When we got upstairs, he went into a room. I stood in the, in that room where I was standing, there was no chair. There was no furniture. I just stood there, empty. He went into a room. And while I was waiting for him, a midget, a short person, a midget, just appeared right in front of me. And the person kept looking at me like this. It just kept looking into my face. Very, maybe like, very short. And I kept looking at my face. He looked at my face. And I kept asking, do you want money? He didn't say anything. In that, in that, in that dream, it looks as if I could speak French. And I was trying to speak French. He didn't say anything. The moment I brought dollars out of my pocket to give to that midget, and I spoke in English. He said, I have told you, go and preach the gospel. I am coming back again. Go and preach the gospel. I am coming back again. I'm coming very soon. Guess what? The moment he made those statements, right in front of me, he disappeared. Then my friend came out with documents in his hand. He didn't say no word to me. He came out with documents. Guess what? 
by the time we got back into that van, half of the people in that van were gone. Half of the people. I'm sharing this with you because some of us sometimes we delay a lot. We de delay in what you see. One of the greatest delay is to delay in finding what you are supposed to do. Delay to find God. What have you called me to do? To, I won't lie to you. For almost two weeks, I was not normal. I because that guy. Imagine the guy that we went upstairs. Both of us used to smoke together in the university. I went. So the guy represented my past. Imagine what God probably already planned. What I ought to have started doing while I was in university. I spent five years in university in Nigeria from 2003 to 2008. And now I give my life to Christ. Brethren, what I'm trying to tell you is, please, I beg you, whatever you are doing, one thing I always tell my wife, and my twin sister, I don't want my life to be like Martha and Mary. Many times, our flesh, the devil, can get us so occupied with things that are secondary. And the primary, the primary assignment has been ignored. The primary assignments have not even yet been discovered yet. Please, I beg you, find yourself Find yourself. Don't, don't, you see, don't focus. Let me tell you one of the encouragements Holy Spirit told me, and this one is for someone here. One day I was going through something, and Holy Spirit told me, Holy Spirit said, do you know that if John the Baptist focused on the things he was going through, do you know what it means to be living in the wilderness, wearing animal skin? The son of a priest. His father was Zechariah, a priest. And believing in the wilderness. And yet, the wilderness experience and what he was wearing couldn't choke. He couldn't seize, couldn't resist his voice. You know why? He didn't focus on his environment. He focused on the calling. He was focused on the calling. He didn't allow his lack. He didn't allow what he doesn't have to shut him down. Don't focus on what is happening around you. The Bible says, he that is from above is above all. Focus on what is above. Focus on him. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Focus on the things you can do. Don't focus on the things you cannot do. Focus on him. Focus on him. When the Lord gave me the encouragement that day, he said, my son, John the Baptist went through a lot, but he was focused. You see, like you have heard me say, there are many things that are not written in this Bible. But the only, only, remember what Jesus Christ told them in John 16? He said, there are many things I want to tell you, but you can't understand. He said, but when the Holy Spirit comes, He will begin to give you a download. Brethren, please be encouraged. Find time. Find time. Find time. I've been asking God before this 40th birthday for weeks now, Lord, I need a new strength for another 40 years. Because this journey, I'm telling you the truth, I've seen people who started who give up. I've seen people that challenges, challenges, is resisted the advancement. Brethren, life is not for the weak. Life is for the tough and rugged. And I want you to know you are not weak. You are not. I'm telling you, you are not. It's because you have not gone. You see, no matter how a person looks down on a car, because the car is low on fuel, wait until the car refuel, go to the gas station. Then you will know the strength of the speed of that car. Go back. To, I don't know why Holy Spirit keep taking me in this route. Because I have a lot of Bible reading. Go back to the gas station. Your gas station in the presence of God. I'm begging you. Go back to the gas station. Don't allow. You see, and that's why sometimes you, you always see me say sometimes, please take a break. Take a break. A break to go to the praises of God. Don't let me live a wasted life. Don't let my life be full of activity. I'm telling you, 
you'll be so surprised. I'm telling the honest truth. You'll be so surprised the day you have an encounter with God. You'll be so surprised that the things God will be telling you, it will be different from the things you focus on. Please, I beg you. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Take your purpose, your assignment very serious. For those who have found the assignment, ask the Lord for more grace. Be more, be more dogged. Be more committed to it. Become more impact-driven. Impact-driven. That God, let my life count. Let my life count. I'm telling you, there was a season in my life I love to party a lot. I'm I, I don't like to be alone. If I'm alone, it's either I'm smoking or drinking. Because I used, to, I used to be a poet. I used to write lyrics. I used to write a lot. When I'm very high, I like to write things. But when I gave my life to Christ, it began to hide me. I lost interest in party. I'm telling you, I lost interest in many things. It wasn't my will. I used to wear chain before. I used to wear earrings. I pierced my ears before. Holy Spirit, you see, I should begin to journey with the Lord. You begin to, it will begin to pull you in. You see, I had what only Holy Spirit just told me something now. He said, Some of us we love God, but we don't tell God our weaknesses. He said, Some of us we know what we want to do. We know what it's like a person who is telling God, God, give me a husband. But right in your heart, you are telling God, God, this person must be so so so. This person must be <laughs> brethren. It's okay for you to have a spe to have specification or oh, height, um, career wise. God knows what you need. There's nothing wrong you telling him. But don't go in the harm of the flesh. Tell him, God, give me. I've told you before, my wife is here. I've told you before, before I gave my life to Christ. I like tall, tall people. I'm 5'5 five five in height. I like tall women who are taller than me. People who are bigger than me. Because where I grew up in, in Nigeria, when you are a person of my height, <laughs> when you <just> laugh. <laughs> When you're a person of my height, you know, you always want to show off when you come to party. You know, then I, I wanted to build, I wanted to gym, like, you know, that you have, you know, a tall woman, you know, people look at you like, ah, this guy, you know, and a solid guy. But when I gave my life to Christ, <laughs> I, I, everything I gave it to God, God, give me what you need. Give me what you want for me, not what I want. And we do that a lot. A lot of times we hide from God. Don't hide. Tell him. Are you stuck in a wrong relationship? Tell him. Tell him. God, the way I'm looking at this guy, one day he might slap me. The way I'm looking at this guy, I don't think I will ever be mad. I will ever be happy if I marry this guy. Tell him, God, I am stuck. I don't know how to come out of this relationship. Lord, deliver me. Deliver. I'm telling the truth, and we do it. He will, he knows how to, you see, one thing I, that, that makes me fear this God, God can talk to a drunk person. He knows how to talk to anybody. I'm, oh, <laughs> if he can talk to me when I'm high and I know that is, that, that was him, he can talk to anybody. I'm telling you the truth. God can talk to anybody, no matter how drunk they are. No matter how weak he can, he has a way of passing his word, and the person will know that this is God. Brethren, let's move to our next reading. Romans 8:14. Before we read Romans 8:14, I want us to read that same John 15 from verse 1. From verse 1 to 6. John 15, 1 to 6. He says, I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Every branch in me. Can you see? I want you to pay attention to him. Remember when we read 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And therefore, if a man be in. You see that? Please, if you don't remember the topic tonight, just remember, Lord, help me to be inside you. To remain in. I want you to pay attention to these verses. How they kept using the word in. I read, I am the true vine, 
and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, it taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, it purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me, and I in him, the same bring get forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abided not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Brethren, you see, when the Bible says in that verse, six, I believe, verse five, it says, you can do nothing. The devil might try to question someone. What do you mean I can do nothing? But there are many people who are not Christians who are successful. <laughs> Brethren, have you heard about what Jesus Christ said? I believe in the book of Mark and Luke. He said, there was a person. He built a house on the sand. He said, when the wind came, when the storm came, everything was gone. You see, but a person who is in, look at this hand lotion now. Whatever is going to steal this hand lotion must first contain with the covering. What is covering the lotion that is inside? Brethren, I'm begging you. If you read from that verse 1, when I first gave my life to Christ, this John 15 was one of my best chapter, One of my best till now. Because it helped me to recalibrate, to reset my mind. Brethren, please, I beg you. As you read this, you realize that it's two-way, two-way. He said, if I be in you and I, meaning a person can receive Christ, now Christ is in you. But have you allowed, have you now made a decision to now stay in Christ? Many have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but not many have made the choice to be in him. Holy Spirit is in many of us. The Bible says in John 1, 12, for those who believe in his name and have received him, to them he give power to become the sons of God. But how many people are actually inside? How many people are actually, you know, have made the decision to stay? It is in that stain. And that is why, please, for those who are in a relationship, if you want your marriage to last, stay. Learn to spend quality time with your partner. Listen more. Ask questions more. Listen more. On my job, they know. I talk about my family a lot. I'm telling you, I don't joke with my, believe me. Because I have a conscious assignment of, you see, after my calling, a relationship with God. My next assignment is this marriage. I'm telling you the truth. Is after my relation. Let me shock you. You might not believe this. After my relationship with God, my personal relationship with God, guarding of the egos is not my secondary. It's not my primary assignment. My marriage. My marriage. My marriage. Marriage is a big is a big assignment, but not many people. And that's why, you see, as children of God, when you know this, you will take your time before you marry. Because God is counting on you. Because generations, ah, gen, like, oh my God, generations will come out of you. Plenty generations are depending on your decision. 
if you make a wrong decision, it can affect the nation that will be born. Ten years. Marriage is a big, <laughs> oh my God, it's a big issue. It is a big issue. And that is why the two parties must, they must really sit down to understand the cost of what it means because you are on an assignment. It's a big assignment. I'm telling you, it's an assignment that has been entrusted to a person. Brethren, please, I'm begging you, make time to stay in his presence. Make up time because time is going. Time is going. Time is going. Time is going. Let's go to the book of, as we wrap up, you know, and I want you guys, at the end of the day, I want you guys to pray for me today. You know, um, me and my twin, she's right here tonight. You know, I want you guys to pray for us before we go. I want us to quickly open to the book of Romans 8.14. Romans 8.14. If you are there, you can go ahead. Romans 8.14. All right. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. A person would desire to discover their identity in Christ must be willing to allow the person who carried the GPS, GPS, God's powerful spirit, you must allow that GPS called the Holy Ghost to, to lead you, to guide you, because none of us can gain access into God's will. We must allow the person called the Holy Spirit to guide, to lead. I'm begging you, let him lead you. Let him guide you. And it will take consciousness. It will take fellowship in the world. I'm begging you. Let's look at the same chapter. Let's go to verse 19. Verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Brethren, look at the years, the years they wrote this Bible. As I'm talking to you now, in 2024, God and the whole world, they are still waiting for the real sons to emerge. Many have received Christ. Many go to church. Many are Christians, but not many have become sons. Hmm. Brethren, I'm begging you. Generations are depending on you. Gener generations are depending on you. Please don't allow your weakness to become strong. Become rugged. I said something on Monday. If Jesus can cry to God for strength in Gethsemane, he prayed for strength for hours. Brethren, we all we need that strength. I'm telling the truth. It was that strength that he had that he couldn't, he couldn't deny the cross. The strength of God. They beat him. They spat on him. It was that strength. You see, when that strength comes, people think you are abnormal. I'm telling you the truth. You see, people see people like Minister Dose. Do you know that 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 man of God you see, sometimes he goes. He don't disclose this. It was when he used to do upper room. He still does it once in a while now because of his busy schedule. I have many of his archives that I saved. That was where he reviews most of his secret place. Sometimes this guy go on sixty days. Three months fasting. I'm telling the truth. Before that upper room, sometimes, before he comes to minister in the upper room, sometimes in Abuja, he can be in the presence of God for like five hours before that, minute, before that meeting. Brethren, if you and I will emerge, it's a cost. It's a cost. Think about this. If we all who went to school in this country, if we study hard so much to pass exams, do you think it's supposed to be easy for you to really discover who you are? It can only be easy with the help of the Spirit of God. But it will, it will place a responsibility. Responsibility of study. 
responsibility of commitment, dedication, to study, prayer, a life of consecration, knowing that you don't belong out there anymore. I want us to pray. Just one prayer. Then you guys are going to pray for us. Now, Lord, give me the strength to live for you. Give me the strength to say no to sin. Give me the strength to be committed. I've been committed to many things, but I have ignored my own destiny. I have been committed to many things, but I have ignored my own life. My own life. I'm not committed to find myself. Lord, give me strength. Give me strength to be committed, to find me. I need to find me on time. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, Lord, we come before you. Give us the strength to be committed to find us. The strength to find us. The strength to pray. The strength to study. 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 The strength to pray. The strength to find you. The strength to be disciplined. The strength to be disciplined. The strength to be disciplined. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you guys to just pray for my twin and myself that as we mark our 40th birthday today, that the Lord should uphold us with a new dimension of strength for another 40 years or 50 years. If God, if God delayed his coming, that Lord endow us with new strength to go deeper for you, to go stronger for you. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, Lord, we come before you. Lord, we ask God for new grace and strength to go deeper, to walk more with you, to become more consecrated, to go deeper with you, to go stronger with you. Lord, help us, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord. Send us strength. Send us strength. Send us strength from Zion, from Zion, from Zion, from Zion, from Zion. Send us strength, send us strength, send us strength. Uphold us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, is there, peradventure, there's someone here who has been crying to God in the closet? Who is dealing, struggling with one addiction or one behavior or something? Lord, I declare, the Bible says, every tree my father has not planted, they shall be rooted out. The Bible says, I shall decree a thing and it shall be established. I decree and I prophesy by the word of the Lord, let the sword of fire, I cut off every pain from your life. Let the sword of fire begin to cut away. I cut away anything that has brought you shame. I cut them off from your life. I cut them off. I cut them off. I cut them off. I cut them off. In the name of Jesus, I make a demand for new strength. New strength. New strength. New strength. I decree, let your subconsciousness, let your consciousness come back alive. Come back to life. You have been busy, but you have not been busy for your own destiny. I decree from today, begin to pay attention to your destiny. Begin to invest in your own destiny. Begin to invest in your destiny. In the name of Jesus, find that strength, oh God, to tarry, to stay in you, to stay in your presence, to remain in you. Let that grace be released upon us. Father, let your name alone be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone. I sincerely apologize for taking 30 minutes of your time. I just want to say thank you, everyone. Please stay for those who send us messages. Thank you. Thank you for the prayers, everything. My twin and myself, we're very grateful. Thank you. Um, a quick reminder, next week, not this Saturday, next week is our in-person Guardian of the Eagles meeting. Please invite friends, family. We're going to be celebrating the one-year anniversary of this movement. We are trusting God to receive wings. The Lord told me, he said, it's going to be mounting up with wings as eagle. And we are trusting God for those wings to be released in the place of worship. As we stay in his presence that day, we're going to soak in his presence in worship that God will give us the wings. Every wing that has been cut off we grow back. The Bible says, and the air of Samson was taken away. That every air that has been taken away, we begin to grow back. Please invite your friends, invite your family. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Bye-bye. Thank you.
Thank you, Bertel. Have a good night. Thank you, Bertel. Good night and happy birthday.